After 20 years in the industry, using polishing machines, getting in and out of cars, vacuuming, doing everything, detailing takes a toll on your body and I'm sore. You're probably yeah. sore too. Daily. <laughs> One of the main things that I notice with what you guys do is you are constantly in this position of just kind of everything is yeah. it is coming in this way. So the anterior portion of your body or the front of your body is constantly being pulled while the posterior part of the body is being spread apart. So we have what we call eccentric and concentric stretches. So eccentric is when everything is being pulled. To, I'm sorry, when everything is being pulled apart, concentric is pulled together. So what you really need to do is after being in this position for so long <laughs> is you really need to do things like doorway stretches and really opening up the front of the body, opening up the hip flexors, that's really going to help balance things out. Now, whenever I work on people, I'm not looking for somebody to be like statuesque and, you know, perfectly aligned, um, but it can definitely help with some of those wear and tear kind of pains okay. that you get through doing the same kind of things over and over and over again. So mm -hmm. basically what you're doing is just reversing that movement and hopefully giving yourself a little better posture, a little better stability and just yeah. opening up those muscles. Okay. So that can help a little bit with yeah. stiffness and pain. Yeah. All right, let's watch some of the, Okay. see what our guys are doing here. You guys are doing all kinds. So that's a very common position on the side of the car, us buffing. Everything just scrunches. <laughs> yeah. I get so scrunched. Yeah. We have lifts sometimes to lift it up, you know, to get in a better position, either to sit on a chair or stand up. But this is a very common position for a lot of detailers. So do. I could see like a lot of knee issues probably. Yeah. Um, a lot of hip stuff. Um, just shoulder stuff definitely because you're just constantly doing yeah. that yes. okay um yeah i mean even here do you see how you're just you're yeah. hinged at the hips all the time well so when that you're on really the hood or the you know the trunk of a car you're you're hunched over yeah you know, and trying to get a spot in there yeah so really all of it, the reverse needs to be done in order to kind of open up those muscles and not have so much pain there because mm -hmm. here's the thing if you're staying like this for hours during the day Let's say it's it's a Friday, the next day you're going to do, I don't know, normal life stuff. You're still going to have a tendency to be completely pulled forward like this uh -huh. because all of those muscles are being activated and there's muscles that are being overused and muscles that are being underused. So it's not the best posture for your body. And yeah. so if you don't stretch and like make a cognizant effort to try to correct some of that, then that pain just gets worse and worse and worse and then it starts to wear and tear on joints and you just you know you don't you don't want that so it's good to get something like massage therapy or do yoga or stretching you know what i mean to kind of I have some help questions some should, should our guys be like stretching before like starting work yeah i mean just loosening up yeah, and getting those muscles for sure i mean this is a very physical job yeah. so definitely doing any kind of like dynamic type warm-ups or something just to move around so you're not just constantly in that position all the time and just working and working and working mm -hmm. would be super helpful. I mean, that's why people do that before they like work out and stuff. Yeah. Well, where do we get started? Then? <laughs> so I'm going to take Jason through what we call our new patient consultation really quickly. Um, so basically it's just going to be me assessing him and doing some movement screenings. So we're going to do just a very quick structural assessment first. So I'm just going to kind of call out what I see. One of the things that I notice is he's got a tilt. So he's almost leaning. I don't know if you can see this. He's almost leaning to the left just a little bit. Uh, hips are pretty balanced. There's not one that's really higher than the other. Um, and then shoulders are just very, very tight. So if you can see the way his arms kind of come straight out like this, that means we're really, oh my gosh, really, really tight in here. But we're going to go ahead and start. I feel amazing after that, so awesome. thank you. Oh, like, I feel awesome. great. And uh, so what are some things that we can do, like self-care? Okay, so there's a lot of things that you can do as far as self-care goes. One of the things you were talking about is the issues that you have with hands and mm -hmm. forearms sometimes, especially if you're doing things that are very, very grippy and grip yeah. things a lot. Um, <clears throat> so 
not everybody can, this is, you know, not super cheap. So not everybody can afford a, a Hypervolt, but if you can get a massage therapy gun, I mean, that actually is really, really great just to kind of roll that on your forearms and it's really easy. Um, another thing you can do is just on your own. I mean, you, you can have lotion or not. You can just find places in your forearm and then you can just kind of move the hand around and just squeeze the forearm and just kind of open that up. Also, you can do stretches where you just put the hand down on the table. Yep, and then you just stretch back and just hold it for a minute. Like, oh yeah. That's my beard hair. That's gross, I'm sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> With these stretches, you wanna make sure you hold them for at least 30 seconds. Okay. So that you actually feel some kind of a release in the muscle. Consistency is key. You're not gonna do this one time and then, oh, all of a sudden, magically, everything feels better, right? Like, you're gonna have to do this Every day, you should probably do it before work and you should probably do it after work. Um, another one you can do, and this is, you gotta be a little more careful with, is just flip around the opposite way. What well, can and we just do any, of, this is what I'm worried about, it, you know, damage is, if we do this wrong, can we cause damage? Um, like, if you push really, really hard, like, rather than pushing down, really what it is, it's a pulling back. So you're just pulling back and kind of stretching it. It almost out. should feel good. You know, <clears> it like, should feel, yes. Yeah, okay. It should all feel good. Whenever you feel like intense pain when you're stretching, stop. Stop doing that. So another thing that is very simple to do is you can get these cups online, you get them on Amazon. I mean, they're super, super cheap. So you can just take these, you can turn them inside out, and then you can just put them right on your forearm in different places. And then again, you can just kind of stretch that out, open up that tissue, only leave it on for about a minute. I mean, not very long and move that around. You can do it on the other side too and stretch that around. Um, and that's super helpful too, because all it does, it just loosens everything up. Once you've gotten to a, a point where you're just in a lot of pain, you just, you need to go see somebody. You know what I mean? You need to get like the stuff done or go see a physical therapist or something like that. Okay, that's um, great for the arms, <laughs> yeah, everything. You yeah. talked about some like door, Doorway stretches, stretches. yeah. So doorway stretches are gonna be great for you because again, you guys are here all the time. You wanna open up the chest. So getting in a doorway, and I'll actually show you really quick. Super duper simple. Just get in a doorway and you'll just kind of put both arms at a 90 degree angle and then you just kind of pull and you just stretch out your chest. So you can do it both arms at the same time. If you want it to be more specific, you can do one at a time, just pull in there. And really, so again, consistency is key. The biggest thing is you want to hold it for about 30 seconds until you actually feel a stretch yeah. in that muscle. And then in order to get the pectoralis minor, which is right in here, you're going to lift the arm up a little bit and do that same thing. Now, if you feel something funky in your shoulder, because you've got any kind of shoulder issues, just readjust to wherever you need to okay. so that you don't feel... You don't want to feel sharp pain. You don't want to feel anything pinchy. You know what I mean? You just want to feel a good stretch. So if you lift the arm up a little bit, that's going to be in there. 90 degrees is going to be about right here. And 30 so seconds are... is a long time. Usually I'm it like... It is because everybody wants to just like get it over with. Hold it. I do stretches. I'm like, it. one, two, three. Yep, that's yeah, that's good. You're not one, really... two, three. I'm loose. Like, I mean, everything, I guess, helps <laughs> a little bit. That doesn't do a lot though. You know what I mean? So... All right. So two things that are very, very important that you want to have in your arsenal at all times is a foam roller. This is a high density foam roller. They have some that have like knobby things on it and all kinds of other stuff. It doesn't have to have that if you like it, cool, but just a high density foam roller that you can roll on. And then also a lacrosse ball or like a yoga tune up ball or a pinky ball. Um, These two things can help you so much with so many different things. So if you don't have access to somebody that can actually you know, do a kind of session like we did here today, you can, especially if you travel a lot, these are great to bring with you. If you can't bring this because it's too big, just at least bring your lacrosse ball. So okay. things that you can do with this, um, if you get against a wall and you can just put this like right in different places in your back where you just feel pain. Okay. And then you can even while that's back there, move your arm around and just kind of massage into that. That's going to be great. And again, you're going to want to hold it there for a little while so that you can actually feel it release and do something. And then the foam roller, if I were you and I had your kind of job, because this is really what I do with this kind of job, is yeah. every night I get on my foam roller and just roll out my back. Really? It feels great and it just loosens everything up and it's just really nice. And then after I do that, I'll do like a, a doorway stretch. So this, you just put down on the ground and yeah. you just lay on it and roll your back out. I mean, it's- Back and forth? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, by the way, we're gonna uh, put all the links in the description here okay. of what, you're yeah. gonna recommend yeah. for a lot of this stuff? Okay. So here's something else you can do. He looks do. tense, and sh should we relax? Yeah, breathe, Eric, <laughs> breathe. Okay, so here's something else you can do too. Put your hands behind your head, and then I want you to bring your elbows up. So when you do this, this actually retracts the shoulder blades, and then you can get the muscles 
underneath those shoulder blades a little bit better. Um, so that's a really good thing to do too. And then once you've done this for about two minutes, a minute or two, then that would be a perfect time to go into your doorway stretch. Um, so that's for that. And now let's do a technique for the glutes. So go ahead and put the roller back down on the ground. Um, so low back pain, a lot of times low back pain comes from very, very tight gluteal muscles. So Eric, I want you to sit on that. And then you're gonna just go to one side, like lean to one side. Yep. It's okay, that's good. Nice. And then and then you're just gonna lean onto one one cheek. <laughs> yeah. And then you're gonna roll basically on that. And then one of the other things you can do is after you roll that out a little bit, this leg, you can actually cross over this leg. So straighten this leg out, cross this leg over that leg, and then you can continue rolling. So again, you're just yeah, on the same thing. So you're just hitting, yeah, you're just hitting different muscles when you do that. See, I've been coming to see you for over a year. I've never done this. Well, there you go. I don't see? look at your emails. <laughs> <laughs> I sent you all the links to everything. Um, now we will demonstrate quad stuff. Go ahead and flip over and we'll do. Yep, yep. Well, so you're a pro at this. So this is how you roll the quads. You're just going to get. Double. Um, let's do double first. Thank you for asking. Um, yep. And then you're just going to go nice and slow across those quads. If you feel spots that are particularly sticky, you can just kind of hold right, it there for a minute. Yeah, yep. Back. And then just kind of let it release a little bit, but make sure you go slow. You don't want to go too fast or basically the muscle is just going to tense up against you and you're not really going to get into the tissue. So if you want it, want more specificity, you can get right into that muscle. If you just do the single leg. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. That looks good. I do it this way because it just doesn't hurt as much. So basically, you're just gonna get right on that IT map, but I keep my leg bent and then I just press the knee into it and I just roll the IT band this way because it just, it doesn't hurt as much and actually feels pretty good, but you're still loosening that IT band. Gr another great shoulder one, get on top of this foam roller. So when you saw me work on him, I was working like in the armpit and the subscapularis, which is this muscle right here. You're going to lay right on that foam roller and then you can, oh yeah, <laughs> that, that feels awesome. Ah. So you can kind of roll back and forth this way. You can move that arm around and just kind of really get into that muscle. You can also roll back and forth this way, but it really opens up that shoulder. And that's what I was talking about. When it gets really tight in here, it pulls on the shoulder and creates pain in here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, best way to do hamstrings, actually, hang on, is to, so, so I'm getting this chair because it's a hard surface is to get something with a hard surface and then just grab your ball, put it right on that hamstring. Um, and then you're going to just mash into the lacrosse ball or pinky ball or whatever you have. And then you can just move that leg around and just kind of mash and kind of dig into that hamstring. And then you can just move it around to different areas. So if you're in uh, North Georgia, Teresa is the one to call. But like, what if if somebody's in a different state? Like, what are they going to Google search to find somebody Honestly, who can do this type of what I would do is I would look up structural integration honestly i feel like that's where i have taken most of the stuff that i do i usually borrow mostly <laughs> from that um and i feel like if you work with a structural integrator they will at least really have that like holistic concept of we're looking at movement we're looking at connective tissue rather than just hey this is a traditional and traditional massage is great but it's just different it's not as specific as yeah. something like this or structural integration so that's what right. i would look up is structural integration cool yeah. Well, thank you for everything. You're welcome. I appreciate yeah, it. you did great. I'm very proud of you. You did <laughs> awesome. You. you made it. That's All awesome. Right. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>